Hey, thank you for watching. I'm Brother James. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We are in Revelation chapter number 6. We come today to verse number 12. This is the sixth of seven seals. The Bible says, And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I doubt we'll get that far but we'll give it a shot. There are many fine teachers of the Word of God who panic when faced with passages dealing with God's judgment. Unwilling to face things so terrible, they invent private interpretations which should embarrass them. Some writers say that we have here a violent convulsion of the whole structure of society. Others suggest that the sun, moon, and stars are figurative of rulers and that the removal of mountains and islands indicates the unsettling of all that seems stable and abiding. A third group tells us the description is figurative, for the heavens do not literally pass away until after the millennial reign of Christ, and the great earthquake speaks of upheaval of human government or anarchy or riot rule uh, following in the path of war and stable forms of government uh, being overthrown. Yet another company says, and, and I quote, it is therefore not a worldwide literal earthquake that the sixth seal introduces, but rather the destruction of the present order, political, social, and ecclesiastical, Reduced to chaos, the breaking down of all authority, and the breaking up of all established and apparently uh, permanent institutions. <laughs> and these are conservative, fundamental scholars who profess to believe the Bible. Now, when God gave the law, Exodus 19, there was an earthquake, and the people did not mistake it for political unrest. They felt the ground moving beneath their feet. In the days of Elijah, there was an earthquake, 1 Kings 19, verse 11. And while some may call it ecclesiastical turmoil, it broke the rocks in pieces. When Jesus died on the cross, there was an earthquake. Matthew 27, 51 to 52 this did not change the structure of society, but it did burst the graves in the local cemetery. This earthquake is an earthquake. It's what the Bible says it is. Moreover, there is frequent reference in the Word of God to this earthquake in connection with the Great Tribulation, and the Second Coming of Jesus Christ. I want to show you some of these references. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2 and verse number, uh, let's see, 6 and 7. Uh, and uh, let's see, verse number, I'm, st I'm starting at 7, verse 6, here we go. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. That's pretty clear, don't you think? Great earthquake in connection with the second coming of Christ. Look in Zechariah chapter 14. 
Zechariah chapter 14, just over a page or two. And verse 5, I believe. Verse number 5. Zechariah 14, 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Ye shall flee as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. You can find this also in uh, Exodus 33, 14. No, I'm sorry, that not, not Exodus. Here we go. Psalm 46, 3, Psalm 77, 18, Jeremiah 10, 10. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 24, let's see what we have there. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 24. We're talking about a great earthquake in connection with the end of tribulation time and the coming of Jesus Christ. Matthew 8 and verse number 4. Behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Insomuch the ship was covered with waves, but he was fast asleep, shaking, turmoil, trouble, terror. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 26. Hebrews 12, 26. Take a look. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now hath he promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. So there is going to be a literal, tremendous earthquake in connection with these tribulation times. Now, the Bible also says the sun became black. This occurred in Egypt during the 10 plagues, Exodus 10, verse 22. It happened again when Jesus was hanging on the cross, Luke 23, verses 44 and 45. These recorded events are to be taken quite literally. We believe the sun went dark when Christ hung on the cross. That's what the Bible says. We believe the sun went dark when God was plaguing Egypt. That's what the Bible says. We believe it'll go dark again during the tribulation time. Listen to this. Isaiah 13, verses 9 and 10. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the earth desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Jesus said in no uncertain terms, Matthew 24, 29 to 30, Immediately after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened. These verses, taken as they stand, and that's how we take them all, are crucial. For they show a darkening of the sun during the tribulation time before the day of the Lord, Joel 1.15, and another blackout in the day of the Lord. If you don't believe the Bible, that God will turn out the lights, Genesis 1.16, then why read it? If you don't believe what it says, why read it? I believe what it says. Look, there's no sun, and God puts the greater light in the sky to rule the day. I believe that. There's no moon. God puts the lesser light in the sky to rule the night. That's Genesis chapter 1. Now, if you believe there's no light and God makes a light, how can you not believe that God can turn out that light and turn that light back on and turn that light out again? No problem to me. Maybe my God's bigger than yours. Genesis 12 said, And the moon became as blood the moon became as blood. 
Uh, maybe you could write a book and embarrass yourself and set a date for the moon turning to blood. And then when that date passes, instead of hanging your head in shame and, and getting off the stage, you could just keep right on like nothing ever happened and people just keep sending you money as though they had a brain in their head. But the moon is going to be turned into blood. I don't know the day and time. You don't know the day and time. No TV preacher knows the day and time, but it's going to happen. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Isaiah 13, verses 9 through 11. Isaiah 13, verses 9 through 11. For behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Ezekiel 32 and verse number 7. Ezekiel 32 and verse number 7. I believe the Bible. What, what incredible days are coming. The Bible says in Ezekiel 32, 7, which Jeremiah 32, 7 won't help much. Let me get to the right place. Here we go, 32, 7. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her lights. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord. That's what the book says. That's what we're going to go with. And verse 14 says, Revelation 6, 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Pretty shocking words. What does Isaiah 34, 4 say? Isaiah 34 and verse number 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Do you have other, other information on that? Psalm 102, verse 26. Psalm 102, and verse number 26. They shall, no, let, let me go back. Verse 24. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations of old. Hast thou laid the foundation of the earth? I believe that. And the heavens are the work of thy hands. I believe that. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Romans 1 warned you that the day would come when men would worship and serve the creature, not the creator. We have lived to see a day. I, I'm living in a day when people worship, adore, praise, honor, study the sun, the moon, the stars, the heavenly bodies. They worship and adore the rivers, the lakes, the trees, the animals, the birds, and scoff at the idea that there, there even is a God. 
their atheism, their environmentalism, their, their uh, all, all of these, these isms, <laughs> anything but God. We'll worship Mother Nature as though that was some real entity. We'll, we will devote ourselves to saving and preserving the endangered animals or the endangered ozone or the endangered planet or the endangered ice caps or the endangered polar bear. But we don't believe in God. You know what the Lord said? I'll outlast those stars. I will be shining when the sun goes dark. I will give light when there is no moon. I'm God. I'm almighty God. He'll shake this old earth. He'll roll up those heavens. He'll turn out the lights. Then what will you have? If, you're, if your religion is the environment, if your hope is in the stars above, okay, then what will you have? I'll put my trust in God. I'll put my hope in the Lord. The sun, that's not the thing you want to count on. The moon and stars, that's not where you want to put your hope. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Hope you join us next time. We'll pick up right here. Till then, I'm Brother James. May the Lord richly bless you and good day.